Hi folks, I wanted to quickly walk through the basic aspects of the lab this week for project one. Um, the main notebook for this part of it is in the GitHub repository. It's called Arduino as a Laboratory Interface. And if you go to GitHub, you can read about various aspects. Uh, first of all, the main point is the Shockley equation, which describes the current through an, a diode. In this case, we'll be using an LED. And you can see that uh, the function has the current, then it's got this parameter I0, which is sometimes called the reverse leakage current. And then it's got a bunch of uh, variables up here in the exponent of this uh, exponential. It's got the charge on the electron, it's got the Boltzmann constant, it's got the temperature of the junction. Those things we don't have any control over. Um, and they're pretty much fixed. The temperature is going to be, you know, room temperature. It'll be around 300 Kelvin. Um, KB is the Boltzmann constant from Physics 153, I'm sure you remember. The charge on the electron, uh, you know, it's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 Coulombs. I'm sure you remember that. These are all just fixed constants. Um, one useful fact is that at room temperature, KB times T, it works, it's an energy, right? Remember KB is so many joules per Kelvin, T is Kelvin, and so KBT is so many joules. And it turns out to be, or so many electron volts in this case, and it turns out to be 1 40th, or 0 0.025 uh, electron volts roughly at room temperature. So that's a nice reference uh, if you need to calculate KBT. And uh, eta, this Greek letter eta here, is a uh, parameter of the diode. That's one of the unknowns that we're going to measure. So typically, <coughs> eta is a number not very different from 1. So it's going to be somewhere between 0.1 and 10, uh, order of magnitude 1. So typical numbers that students get are 2, 1.6, things like that. Um, but uh, if, if you get 100, that's probably there's an error there somewhere. Or if you get 10 to the negative 7, that's clearly not going to be okay. So uh, eta is a number of order of magnitude 1 that we're going to measure. That's a parameter of the diode. And the reverse leakage current, is it's a very small current, typically, you know, nanoamps or something. Uh, and, and so uh, we'll be getting that from the data as well, or an estimate of that number. Um, so that's, that's thing number one. We already talked about the circuit we're going to use to run this thing. We have sort of simulated it last week. I'm going to put the circuit in Tinkercad right now, which is another simulator. The advantage Tinkercad has over Easy EDA is it can simulate not only the electrical circuit, but it can also simulate the Arduino. So we can write code and make, quote, measurements, unquote, uh, they're not real measurements, of course. This is all, all fake simulated diodes and capacitors and resistors, but it's, uh, it's better than nothing. So uh, anyway, in the notebook, there's a bunch of stuff here about programming the Arduino. C uh, CSCI 155 is not a prereq for this class, so I occasionally have students who've never taken CSCI 155, and, they're not, and they've never programmed an Arduino before. So I'm just introducing them to the setup function, the loop function, and basic concepts in C programming. So all this stuff here has nothing to do with this particular lab. It's just general concepts in C programming. Um, there is one thing, of course, there's talking on the serial port with the Arduino, but I think everybody in this semester already knows how to do that, so I'm not going to spend any time on that. Um, you do need to set up the circuit below. You do need to choose values for R1 and R2. Uh, and C. I should add C to that list. Um, and then you need to write a program on the Arduino that's going to systematically adjust the duty cycle of the output using analog write and uh, wait a moment, do a delay, and then um, do an analog read to read the voltage at the top of the uh, resistor. Let's see which resistor is it. <coughs> So you're going to want to read the voltage at this junction, at the top of R2, and at this junction, at the bottom of R2. Of course, notice that this junction is also um, 
the volt it measures the voltage drop across the LED because this junction is ground at zero volts. So <clears throat> you need to add one more wire when you set up the experiment, maybe from A1 up to this junction in order to measure the voltage drop across R2. So that's the idea. Let's pop over to Tinkercad and let's see how that works. So I'm going to go down here to circuits. I'm going to create a design. <clears throat> I'll grab a little breadboard here. So this is just like the breadboards we're using in the lab. Um, I need an LED. I'll grab one of those guys. And we need a couple of resistors. So I'll grab a couple of those. Let's see, I need one. Yeah, I guess I'll just put them here. One there. And one, say, where should I put it? I guess I'll put it here, just to be clear. Okay. And of course, I need an Arduino. So I'm going to grab an Arduino. Put that here. And then uh, I want to rotate the Arduino to make it a little easier to work with. Uh, let's see right here. here we go. Um, is that what I want? We'll do it this way. Okay. Now, sometimes we'll be using power and ground, and if we were, uh, what I would do is grab this 5 volts here and connect it to the power rail, connect ground here to the ground rail, and I'd probably go ahead and run those up on this side as well, just as a general rule if I'm, and I would say do this in the lab too. Now this week, we're not really uh, needing to uh, deliver power to anything because our whole circuit is just resistors and, oh, I need a capacitor. Oh, okay, let's, let's get a capacitor. <clears throat> Actually, let's put this over here. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, uh, Yes, so but so I'm but just out of habit I'm gonna go ahead and set those guys up because it's generally what, what we do. Now I want the capacitor, I want one leg of the capacitor to go to ground. I want the other leg of the capacitor to be driven by this uh, resistor here. And then I want the other end of the resistor, it needs to go way over here. And it's gonna be driven by one of these PWM pins. These are the ones that have the little tilde next to the number, like the 3, 5, the 6. Those are all PWM pins, and they support uh, this pulse width modulated output that we need to drive to, to get the uh, approximate analog voltage that we need to drive the resistor. Uh, and now that I'm over here, I'm actually going to move this guy this way. This is the voltage. This is ground. This is the voltage on the capacitor that we're going to use to drive the the diode. So I'm going to run this guy over here, run him up here. Let's just do it, let's just do it this way. I'm trying to make the routing clear. So this, <clears throat> this is the voltage at the junction of the capacitor and this, this resistor that's connected to the PWM. This is our 2 volts or 3 volts or whatever. It's the analog output of the Arduino. We're going to use that to drive the uh, diode. So this is the anode of the diode. This is the cathode. The cathode needs to go to ground and the anode needs to get driven by this resistor. So that's the basic drive circuit. So, um, But I need to make I need to make measurements. So uh, how am I going to do that? Well, I want to measure A0. I want that to be the voltage drop across the the LED. So I'll measure that guy there. And then this one wants to be the drive voltage that's uh, output from that RC circuit. So that is going to be here. So I've got I'm measuring the voltage at the top of this resistor. I'm measuring the voltage at the bottom of this resistor. Here it is. And then that is also the voltage drop across the LED. Okay, so that's the basic circuit. Now you guys need to pick values for R1, R2, and C. Um, I'll let you think about what those need to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set them, but I'm going to edit the video so uh, so you guys don't you you, you don't uh, lose the opportunity to figure it out for yourself.
<clears throat> okay, so uh, let's march ahead. Um, <clears throat> oh, I need a capacitor. Okay. Now I need to program the Arduino. So I click on the Arduino and I click the code button. It brings me to a code window. I want to just use text. It's going to warn me that if I switch to text, I, I can't switch back to block. That's okay. Um, that's really big. So I'm going to diminish this just a little bit. Okay. Um, all right. You you get for free an, a program that turns on and off the LED, the in built-in LED once a second. Actually, once every two seconds. So I'm going to get rid of. I'm going to actually put in here. Uh, Let's make a uh, pound define. It's going to be drive, and that's going to be pin three. So I'm going to define drive to be three. I'm going to define uh, VD, the voltage of the diode. We're going to measure that on A0. I'm going to define uh, BC, the voltage on the capacitor. That's going to be A1. Okay. And uh, we're going to set the pin mode of drive to be output. So that means we're going to be pushing that, uh, that drive uh, PWM signal with ever-increasing uh, values. Then uh, let's make an integer variable. Let's call it current drive. And... Um, Initialize it to zero. It doesn't really matter what we initialize it to. We're going to change it. So the idea is every time through the loop, we're going to adjust the current drive value. Then we're going to wait a second. Then we're going to uh, measure the voltage at the top of the LED. And then measure the voltage at the top of that uh, drive resistor. And then uh, we'll keep going. Okay? So that's how we get the data. Um, I can talk a little bit in class about what you actually do with that, uh, and uh, maybe I'll make a video describing what the plan is, but for now, let's just do it. Um, so what we're going to do is increment the current drive. So I'll say current drive uh, plus equals one. That's going to increment it by one. We're going to um, check if current drive is greater than 255. That's the maximum it can be. Then we're going to set current drive to zero. And um, we should probably delay. Let's delay uh, maybe about a thousand milliseconds because I want to wait until we start over. <clears throat> okay. So this only happens, uh, you know, af after you've finished one set of data collection, you hit 255, you need to stop, and maybe maybe you can stop the program, maybe you copy all the data out, uh, but in any case, you want to give it a little bit of delay so you have time before it starts collecting more data. But if it's not the end, then what do you want to do? You want to drive, so we're going to do an analog write of the drive pin with the current drive value. Mm -hmm. That'll set the PWM duty cycle. Then we're going to delay for a little bit. Now, you don't have to delay very long. Remember that the PWM signal has a, it goes 500 times a second. Um, the time constant of your uh, RC circuit is on the order of, uh, what's it going to be? It's uh, more, a lot more than two milliseconds, but probably it's not 2,000 milliseconds, probably 200 milliseconds or something like that. So um, let's just delay for maybe 300 milliseconds, three-tenths of a second. <clears throat> okay, and then we'll get some data. So let's, uh, let's make some variables here. Int um, VD is the voltage across the diode. Um, int 
uh, DC. Notice these are lowercase d and lowercase c. That's the voltage across the capacitor. So I can say here, and these are integers. So this is a, remember it's a 10-bit A to D converter, so they're going to be numbers between 0 and 1023. I don't want you to do any voltage conversions in the Arduino program. The Arduino program is just going to collect the data and dump it. All the voltage conversions can happen in your Jupyter Notebook uh, when you're analyzing the data. So uh, that turns out to be the best plan in general. So let's. Uh, so what I'm going to say is let's measure VD. VD is equal to analog read like that. Uh, of what? It's going to be VD. And VC is going to be analog read of VC. Right? And then I'm going to do a serial. Oh, i got to set up the serial code here. Let's do that. So it's serial.begin, and let's make it 9600 baud. 9600 bits per second is the standard bit rate, but uh, the Arduino software assumes you're using. You can change it, but you have to be careful to change it in the IDE and also change it in the uh, Arduino code. So we'll just set it to the default, and it should work. Uh, we're going to do serial.print. <coughs> Uh, VD. We're going to do a serial dot print comma. We'll do a serial dot print um, PC. We'll do a serial dot print. Actually, I could just do serial dot print line here, and then uh, it'll just print a new line as well. Notice I'm not worried about the time because we're not nothing in the Shockley equation is about time. So in a if this is a project where time was important, and we'll run into some of those when we do the differentiator or the integrator, any of those circuits, we're going to need to know the time. So we're going to also have to print out the current time. There's a function in the Arduino called millis that tells you how many milliseconds it's been since you uh, rebooted the Arduino, and you can use that to get the to get the current time essentially. At least the current time since you started the program. So let's go ahead and start the simulation. And I'll open the serial monitor. And you can see we're getting, there we're getting some numbers. So that's it. That's the voltage across the um, resistor. And the, it's the voltage at the top of the resistor and it's the voltage at the top of the diode. You know, notice right now they're all the same number. And they're all the same number because the voltage is so low that the diode hasn't turned on yet. Um, but if you wait a minute, the voltage of the diode will cap at some value, and the voltage across the, uh, the voltage at the capacitor is going to just keep going up because we're going to drive it harder and harder. Um, okay, here we go. You'll notice that the voltage drop across the capacitor is 353, but the voltage drop across the diode is less. So what we're seeing is that the uh, diode is, we're getting a voltage drop across that resistor, which means there's current now flowing through the diode. And you'll also notice the diode is starting to uh, brighten in the video. So the diode is starting to turn on. Um, and as we continue to push harder and harder, the, um, the thing will just get brighter and brighter. The voltage drop across the LED is going to, uh, you know, it's going to reach kind of a plateau and, and not go up very much. Whereas the voltage across the capacitor is just going to keep increasing. Okay, I went ahead and stopped the simulation. I'm going to go in here and copy all these numbers. And I'm going to paste those into a, just a text file. No. Okay, this. Copy. Paste. There we go. So, um, 
the good news now it looks like it didn't keep all the numbers the unfortunately it looks like the uh, unlike the Arduino IDE the Tinkercad IDE has a limit to the number of uh, voltages it can or values it can st store um, but the good news is it, it goes back to where the two voltages are the same which is all I really care about I want to I want to go from where the voltages are the same through to where they're pretty different and I think I've got that so um, what I'm gonna do is say this is gonna be uh, VD and this is gonna be VC so I've got a CSV file I'll save that as something like diode data dot CSV and then um, I could pop over here to deep note I'm going to make a new project. So let's call it diode data. I'm going to, let's see, I want to add a code block. I've got the browser so zoomed in now it's almost impossible to type, but that's okay. Uh, let's say import uh, p pandas as pd. I think that's all I'm going to need for this particular exercise. And then I need to drop that data file. Let's do that. Let's see. Uh, ah. Okay. Let's just drop that data file onto the project. Then I can just say uh, df equals pd dot read csv diode data dot csv df. And there I have my, I've got my vd, I've got my vc, right? So let's just plot those guys. Um, well, I guess, uh, can I just do a df dot plot? Well, yeah, well, let's try it. df dot plot. Oh yeah, there you go. So there you can see it. Uh, now this is this plot is a plot of the index number, the number of the value. So it goes. We took about 120 values, it looks like, and it's just showing the raw value from the Arduino. But you can. This is what I wanted you to see. This is below the threshold where the diode is not turned on, and here's where the diode is suddenly starting to draw current. You can see that the voltage drop across the capacitor just keeps going up because we're driving it harder and harder and harder. But the voltage on the diode, uh, reach, you know, sort of plateaus. So that's the basic feature that I wanted you to notice. Of course, you're going to use those voltage measurements to calculate the voltage drop across the resistor, the current through the resistor. That's what gives you the current. And then you're directly measuring the voltage drop across the diode. So you can go back and then analyze the data uh, using the Shockley equation. So that's what I have.